Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Mondo and Friends presented by Verizon. My name is Mondo Fresco, and today I am joined by actress, producer, entrepreneur, humanitarian. Lo haces todo, Kate. Kate Del Castillo, how are you? I'm good. So happy to be here with you, and congratulations for all you've done. De verdad, es un honor. And, and I think that we all should be very proud of you wow. and proud of people who does the things that you've done and accomplished. It's really, really outstanding. Kate, thank you. Thank you so much. That, that means more than, than you'll ever know, hmm. honestly. Thank you. And uh, congratulations to you, too. Thank you. <laughs> you know, season three, Reina del Sur, we'll get into that. Uh -huh. um, I talked to you about the show and what it's about. It's about you, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I want to take it back to where... You originally fell in love with the art of entertainment, of, of acting, of being in front of the screen. Yes. Do you remember that first time when you said, I think I want to do this? Clearly. Like, uh, like it was yesterday. My, my dad, um, so you know, he's a huge actor. He's very well known in Mexico. Legend. In, in Latin America. He's done over 350 movies and telenovelas and everything, right? So I already was born into that world, introduced in that world very early. And so I knew what, what, what was it. And, but it was only one time that my dad took me and my sister to this place she was on, he was on uh, called Salome. Te imaginas Salome con wow. esto, you know? So, and I remember it was uh, a, this beautiful theater in, in, in Mexico City. Um, the radura, you know, like a horseshoe, yep. that kind of shape. That those are beautiful with, you know, balconies and all that. And I remember I was being, you know, just haciendo travesuras in the back with my sister. And I opened the, the, the curtain, and I remember I saw these people gathering and sitting and just chatting, and and I felt something so special that I still have goosebumps. But wow. something really special, saying, "This is where I want to be in this side of the of the theater," wow. you know, and and I. I decided I wanted to be an actress. I just was so insecure. I was a little girl. I was like around seven, nine. And I wouldn't say I wanted to be an actor because I thought it was very hard. Yeah. So, and that's, you know, that, that's the, the school that I have is from my dad. I, everything that I, that I am as an actor and the discipline and the love for my craft, for the industry, for everything is because of my dad. Wow, that's yeah. beautiful. You know, uh, I wanted to to be a, a professional soccer player when I was a kid. Okay. My dad, huge soccer fan and huge in in his in his home city, and he's from Colima. Colima, okay. Mexico. Okay. Tecoman, Colima. Okay. Mexico. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, he was super hardcore. So whenever he would see me on the pitch on the field, me gritaba, and he was really strict, and he was, you know, of course. when it came to because that was almost his craft in a sense, you know. When it came to, to, to your case, do you feel like there was pressure there or? You know what? My so dad much? didn't want me to be an act. He never said, I don't want you to be an actor, but he didn't push me. He didn't help me in, in that way. Like, you know, introducing me to people or whatever. Uh, he, I think he was afraid. And then I understood it. I didn't understand in, in that moment, but I, I later did because he didn't want me to grow up in a very harsh environment in the way that actors we live out of rejection yeah sabes yeah. so sea, when it's when somebody says yes it's very weird it's, it's rare you yeah. know when you're starting when you're still i get no's all the time wow so um so and i think that's very you know a dad i i wouldn't want that for my daughter or my son if i were if if si fuera una mamá, you know but um just because rejection is really bad and not a lot of people ha know how to how to take it yeah you know so so i think that's uh, already uh hard you know our, our our craft our profession is really hard is it? i mean you don't get there or just like that or having to only because i have a, a famous dad right i'm sure people thought that Right? Yes, absolutely. No, absolutely. And 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 then of course they asked me if it was good for me or bad to have a, a dad. I think it's always good because at least well, I know and I think really very humbly uh, that all the love that I received from fans and from people among my life have yeah. been because of uh the love of because they love my dad. Yeah. Because he's a he's an amazing human being, not only an amazing actor, but 
Uh, you you know, I think that love comes because of my dad, so I appreciate it very much. So instead of being, you know, something, así un, una carga para mí, it's been a blessing. Yeah. When when you, even you said now, sometimes you get no's. How does, how do you deal with, with that? And how did you deal with that then? Actually, I want to ask you that first. How did you deal with that then? Because, you know, there's a lot of young viewers and fans that that watch this and that want to get into the arts or that want to get into uh entertainment or just want you know the new the new world of 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 social media you have to be yeah. a creator but there, it's it's difficult to be turned down to get no's what yeah. advice would you oh have oh my god i had so many <laughs> you know so many people turn me down and, and i still i i do struggle and i still honestly i mean i, I don't i'm still not getting the you know the projects that I would like or the or the roles and this and that but it's I think you have to really love what you want yeah. there's so many people out there that are probably much better actors you know than me or what but I doubt that but, you're, 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 <laughs> you. you're up there you're up thank there thank you but you yeah. know when you you're young you really need to know exactly what you want because it's not easy not no profession is easy yeah but this one in particular uh you know it has so attached like like fancy and glamour and yeah. it's so not like that i wish they people would know how it's a lot of work yes and then there's the fashion shows and there's you know the the, the cover of the magazines and this show and the other but it's a lot of work and uh and you have to be prepared you have to be prepared and really really know what you want because there's a lot of people that out there that probably deserves that space yeah <laughs> Hey, Mondo here. Right now, you deserve the network more people rely on. That's why Verizon is introducing Welcome Unlimited for just $30 per line per month with four lines and auto pay, plus taxes and fees. Their best price unlimited plan ever. Did you say $30? Yep, $30 a line per month for the whole familia. <laughs> Pretty cool, right? Wait, wait, where are you guys going? Guys, guys. The network you want, the price you love. Switch to Verizon. Visit verizon.com slash mondo today. Guys, can someone turn the camera off now? When when you get like a, a your big break, and, and you may consider something different, but what I remember, the first place I saw you was Muchachitas, right? Which was like a, a legendary telenovela. Yes, uh, and and I I I was I, I remember you know just watching it you know growing up and and it was just so much fun to to see young faces like yourself and uh, I actually told my my father yesterday that you were coming really yeah and 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 that was one of the the telenovelas that we watch as a family yes so you well, know you've done so much work think about that yeah. but the first thing that I told him was. I mean, he knows you by name, right? But uh -huh. I said, you know, muchachitas, and he's like, oh, see, sí. oh and, and that that is is so close to our hearts as a family. Absolutely, and I love that. Thank you for saying that because telenovelas. I know a lot of people don't like to talk about telenovelas because they feel they are like, you know, they don't, they have no quality or it's their telenovelas. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. They diminish them. I love them because they gave me it so much, and not only they gave me. They are huge everywhere, the Mexican telenovelas. Um, then as an actor, I got bored a little bit, you know, and I wanted to do something else. But I really, everything that I know and all the love and all the passion and all the respect that I have, also because my, my dad never had any, any other business yeah. on the side. So this is all we know. So we live literally out of being actors. So for me, the love and the respect comes from there. But everything that I know is because of the telenovelas. And I did a lot of... Uh, video homes yeah as you say llamaban so they were like short movies that you, you will shot in two weeks and go to straight to video but they were huge yeah there was a lot of work there so it was in as a movie just with one camera just like that but it was a really fast one and uh and so you know the telenovelas in, in especially muchachitas that was our our main goal as actors of telenovelas is to gather the family and watch your favorite soap opera so favorite telenovela yeah. So now that you're telling me that, it's like, ah, me siento feliz that we did what we accomplished yeah. what we yeah. were supposed to accomplish. Yeah, yeah. What, what would you 
consider your your the, the big moment in in when you first started your your career? Well, definitely tel uh, uh, the telenovelas gave you uh, like you you will be known from the de la noche a la mañana, you know. Yeah. Um, and uh, so for me, it was like whoa. Oh, I, nobody used to know me, and suddenly, uh, and I've worked a lot before, but in little movies or this and that, uh, commercials. But that was like the big thing where I said, "Oh my God, this is getting—I don't know—is too good or or it's not that good." Yeah. You know, I didn't know how. I, I, of course, I know how to handle the fame because of my dad, but for me, it was different. And I was like, "Oh my God, this is crazy! How like, big are the telenovelas?" And yeah. this one was a huge hit. Huge. Huge hit. I feel like the, the novelas from Mexico are always like big around the world. Not oh my just God, in, yes. In... I still have people like from Asians, Asians coming and saying, are you the actress of the telenovela? And yo, yes, many of them, long time ago, but yes. Yeah. How would you know me? <laughs> you know, and it's because, because, you know, I wanted to learn Spanish and, and they, and everybody watches telenovelas because, yeah. you know, we, we talk as, as we talk in real life. So yeah. that's, it's funny. It's it's great. They go everywhere, and then I've seen, I've heard myself, you know, dubbed in in Chinese, in uh, whatever, in Russian. It's crazy. That is amazing. Yeah. I know you're very proud of of your Mexican heritage. Yes. Why is it so important for you to wave the the Mexican flag and 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 be proud of of your Latino heritage? Oh my God. Well, my dad is very. He is you know very proud of the Mexican. My dad and of course my mom. But you know, we grew up in, in with with a dad who was always uh, talking to us about history. Wow, he's amazing with history, and he will tell all these amazing stories about la revolución and about this and that. So I was I was fascinated by it, and I and, and because I know that we have an amazing country, and, you know, unfortunately we have haven't had like the right, you know, presidentes and and. You know, yeah. so uh, it gets complicated. It gets complicated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not gonna go there. <laughs> but uh, but uh, it's an amazing country, and I'm very proud of being Mexican. We have so much history. We have so much todo, los aguacates, los jitomates, everything comes yeah, from yeah. there. You know, el chile, todo, everything. The food is amazing. So I'm very proud of being Mexican. The only thing, and because I live here and I've been here for 20 years or so, um, it, it, which was really hard for me because I left everything I had. Uh, and I had a lot, you know, I had yeah. a great career and it, I was doing good, but I came here to find better opportunities. So that is already sad and it breaks my heart that I had to go, you know, get out of my country that I love to seek for better opportunities. But unfortunately, you know, Mexico and Latin America, we don't have the opportunities that we should, um, you know. So uh, coming here is like everything now is like, more Mexican for me, everything. Like, <laughs> like now, I hear a mariachi, now. <laughs> you know, I cry, I want me tequila, you know, I talk to my, like, I get more Mexican every yeah, time. Yeah. <laughs> and the more that I, that, that, that I grow up, more Mexican, I get. I love it. You know, I'm more, yeah, when the time passes, it's more Mexican. It, it, and, and, and you learn, and you know, when I hear people talk, sorry. No, you're fine. Talk shit about Mexico. Um, uh, I get so mad. And then I say, well, they are right in some in certain things. Yeah. They are they are right, but I always defend Mexico. You know, yeah, as I you always should. get out there because I think we have so many values as Mexicans. Yeah, and in the, the whole country. For sure, for sure, and we're so important in in this country alone too. Absolutely, I uh, mean, of course. You know, um, my my parents. I talked to you. They're from Colima, uh -huh. and you know, they came here for a better life. Uh -huh. um, and they, you know. You, I look at someone like them who didn't have much, you know, back uh, in their in their home country. Uh -huh. uh, for you to have be well off in in Mexico and and say, you know what, I'm gonna take that that risk. I'm gonna sacrifice and I'm gonna move. Like, how difficult and and what what made you take that take that jump? Um, that's a great question because um, it was uh, out of two things. One, I was bored doing the same role, mostly the same role. You know, when you do telenovelas, they only they only change the guy you kiss, <laughs> which is really good. I mean, I'm not <laughs> That's complaining hilarious. about that. But it's the same role. It's like, you know, it gets boring. 
But um, but I also was going through a difficult part um, part of my life back then. I was getting a divorce, and it was I was already very well known in Mexico, and I was married to this soccer player who was a star, and uh, and it was very public, and it was mm. a domestic violence case. So it was already embarrassing. Everybody knew about it, you know, because it's public. Yeah. All the, you know, so um, so it was uh, I was hurting in so many ways and plus you have to see people and you're famous and everybody asked you and so it was really bad i was not having a good time my parents weren't having a good time and i had the press all over me and um and it was it was getting very hard for me so i decided to come and i uh, they call me the first thing i did here was um uh american family it was a show for pbs yep you, you, do you remember? Yeah, of course. With, with, yeah, with Edward James Olmos and Isai Morales, you know, all that crowd. And it was amazing. So I was already with one foot here, mm -hmm. you know. So I always wanted to come here and just to get... So it was like a, a lot of things that made me just, like, emigrate. And, and yes, we're all immigrants in some right. other of, way or the other because we're always moving, you know. We're always yes. moving. And, and trying to do better. So it was really hard, but then, you know, I I was talking to, the, I, I don't remember, I was the other day and I was like, I love LA because they it really opened everything for me. Yeah. The windows, the doors, everything that was closed, or I thought it was closing for me in Mexico, yeah. they uh, they opened it here for me. So I, I have a lot of love for Los Angeles. I love that, I love yeah. that. You know, Kate, I, I think about, your your journey it seems like it's been a lot of you've had a lot of wins and you've also have been able to be very resilient you've had to be resilient in in, in your your career and and your your personal life uh how do you how is kate so resilient what what's what's inside of you that that pushes you through every time oh passion i guess a lot of passion and a lot of love for for what i do yeah. uh, because i came here and of course i had to start from scratch yeah uh, which was really humbling in so many ways but i learned so much and it was so nice for me to go to an audition and nobody was expecting anything from me you know yeah. so it, it, it could be good or bad but yeah. still for me it was really great and i started getting parts that i would have never gotten in mexico so i was really happy uh, but i didn't have a good time it was really hard and uh, plus the divorce, plus being alone, plus leaving my family, leaving everything. I was by myself, all by myself. Wow. And uh, so it was hard. But I think that resilience comes from, I don't know, I think being Mexican, being a woman. Yeah. You know, because all those things, they add, you know, they're yeah. adding, adding, adding till then there's, uh, you know, and back then there was no me too. Mm. So, uh, yeah, so I wasn't open wow. back then in that. I mean, everybody knew, but I wasn't that open. I was very embarrassed. So now it's a different world. And even even in the industry now, when I first came here, nobody would want to listen to my accent. You know, so I spent so the only money that I had left, I spent it in acting, in acting coaches and accent reduction. Coaches. Wow. So and now it's just a completely different a place here you know it, it, now it's even cool to say one or two words in spanish si. they like my accent yeah. sometimes they say no hazlo más más marcado you know they want me to talk like this i don't <laughs> and i'm like no i'm not gonna <laughs> caricaturize yeah. myself no, i love that you know why not this is my accent and i'm proud of it whatever it, as soon i mean and, and now for example in, in interviews you know that i go went to jimmy fallon and all this amazing and i'm like oh my god what if i you know because I think in now I think in English, but still I there's some words that I table. Yeah. Sometimes I just don't find the word. Yeah. And I, Mesa, and I don't care. You see, I, yeah. I I just throw it in Spanish, and I'm like, well, if they don't know what it is, just go and search it. You know, <laughs> Google it real quick. <laughs> Google yeah. it. Yeah. Google it. So now you know. Now I'm getting more confident, and and, and I think that's that's good because here in LA, everybody speaks Spanish. Yeah. And if you don't, you better. Yeah. You know, so. So now I'm getting more comfortable, and I think that's that comes. I don't know with experience, with age, however you want to call it. But um, now I don't care, you know. That, and I think that's good. I wish I was like that 20 years ago yeah. when I first came here. I I didn't have a good time. 
it was really hard yeah you go into this this new space this new country new city uh, i'm sure it, you know you said it, it it wasn't the the smoothest transition and you know we talk a lot about mental health on this show mm. you know because again it's it's been in the forefront after the pandemic even more so and within young people as well how do you take care of of your mental health today oh my god it, you know um i've been alone for so many years living by myself and i don't have kids i nothing you know so i when i got depressed sometimes i'm not a depressive woman at all i'm oh, most of the time i'm very you know positive and i have a, and i love my work so i'm but but you know i don't have a kid to wake me up if i want to spend a month or two inside my home or in bed yeah nobody would know this and i talk to my parents every day you know how mexicans are i'm very very <laughs> close to my parents but they wouldn't know this because i would you know and I, and that's what happened uh when the whole chapel thing happened, when my marriage, uh, you know, uh, they would never know that I, because I am very yeah. protective of them, so they don't know that I'm having a bad time. Yeah. So I don't meditate. I've, I've tried so many times. Y siempre estoy así que, ah, pero el mandado, mañana tengo que ir, y luego me faltó hacer esto, and then I, you know, so, forget it. I've tried many, many times in so many ways, meditate, yoga, um, I've tried everything, but I tried also that when I was married to this uh, guy. And uh, so, you know, to lower his nerves and yeah. his anxiety, because it was something that happened to him that he couldn't control. Yeah. Uh, it was just, he couldn't control with me, you know, I even, I even bought a punching bag. Honestly, I know it's wow. not funny, but now I can laugh. <laughs> but, you know, because I know that it was something there. So I ended up always by myself when we went to therapy. And he would get so angry and violent after therapy because yeah. I was saying everything. And yeah. he didn't want. So it was bad. So I don't believe in therapy anymore. <laughs> I, I don't, <laughs> I've never had, I, I did once, but I, I had a bad experience. So I decided that I was going to take care of myself by myself. Yeah. That I didn't uh, need someone to help me get out of bed and that I needed to do it by myself because I have nobody to see that. And if, when well, you have your life, in, in control, you have to do something about it. For it's sure. a lot of responsibility. So I decided to come here by myself. Now I have to take care of myself. So, so I get up every day, even though if I <laughs> I don't want to, I have that in me, and I think we all have that in in, in us. It's just you, you know it, it's not easy. Yeah. And 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 I think it's also good to ask for help. I'm not saying it's not good. You know, it's just therapy didn't work for me yeah. for some reason. And, uh, and right, now and, and not, I do a lot of exercise. I, oh, do, nice. I, I have the punching bag. <laughs> so I do have a punching bag in my, in my house. And I love that kind of exercise, very explosive. That's what yoga for me is like so boring. I know it's amazing. And I know there's some yoga that is like really, really, you know. Yeah. But, um, but this is what works for me. And I think, you know, whatever works for you. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Because not, it's not a one size fits all. No, absolutely. Never not. For, for, for anything, for anything, for anything. Yeah. Yes. No, that's, that, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I've been doing therapy right after the pandemic, uh, quarantine kicked in and I, that's when I started, you know, I've been talking about it and I'm an advocate of it, but I'm yeah. so happy that you bring that up because it's not for everyone, you yeah. know, and, and it's not a one size fits all. Absolutely. It, absolutely. And I, and I know a lot of people that therapy has changed their lives in, in, in such an amazing way yeah. that I honestly, I just, I tried it uh, several times during my life and it, it just was worse for me. Mm. So, yeah. um, so that's it, you know, <laughs> it's not for everybody. Yeah. And, uh, but now I'm, I'm, I'm good. I don't let myself go, you know, de de getting depressed or anything. And when I feel it, then I go home, yeah. you know, home is Mexico. Well, now home is here is my home. I've been here for so many years, but, but I call my parents and they bring me down to earth. I love that. Yeah. And that's the beautiful thing about family, right? Absolutely. Oh God. Absolutely. My parents, you know, I'm still the, the niña. Sí. Yo, you know, I'm going to turn 50 and, and they're still saying that. Are you, when are you coming back, mijita? You know, I'm like, I've been 20 years away from Mexico. <laughs> I never said I was coming back. It's like, they're still waiting for me. Or they're still like, well, well, you come back, you stay with us. And I'm like, mommy, 
I have my own thing, you know? It's like, but they, they you know, Mexicans, we are like that. And I yeah, love of course. that about my yeah. parents. And I, and I wish they were here with me. And, and, you know, I miss them every single day. Yeah. We talked about, you know, our, our, our parents, when you go back home to your family's house in Mexico, what what is like your 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 parents go to meal that they have prepared for you or what do you ask when you go back home oh that my mom would cook she cooks amazing but she doesn't cook a lot but when she does she it, you just can you just can taste the love yeah. of a mother when they cook for you you know it's mm -hmm. like it's like there's something special and you know the mexican food is so good and comforting yes. and, you know so i when i go there for christmas for example sometimes they come uh, f w with me to los angeles and sometimes i go to mexico but um i just let them pamper me in so many ways and i'm such a spoiled brat I because I, and then i go in in the in their bed between them and i give you know una pierna a mi papá, uh -huh. una mano a mi mamá, and ay, masajito, entonces, entonces, uh -huh. have me like there, and then I, I just tell stories, and they bring me, you know, I love it. I love what that. What can I say? I love that. <laughs> yes. I absolutely love that. My mom is not the, I gotta be careful how I say this. Yes, please. Oh, my God. No, no. <laughs> she's yes. definitely, she's definitely, definitely watching this episode, you know? <laughs> she doesn't like to cook. Okay. Hasta dice, ay, ¿por qué se inventaron los trastes? I love like, like I she, love anything kitchen, cooking, dishes, she hates, right? But there are certain dishes that, that she cooks amazing. And her carne en su jugo, oh. that's what I ask when I go back home. My mom pozole. Oh. Yeah, but I don't know why they just do pozole the 16 de septiembre. Your mom, do it the entire year. Why not? It's like, no, 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 no. Más el 16 de septiembre. Yo, okay. You know, in el grito, yeah, okay. Well, but she she cooks amazingly. But she she's just like your mom. Yeah. She doesn't like really. She doesn't like cooking. Yeah. <laughs> you know, she my my dad is the one. That, Mi amor, Eric, Eric, hazme una cubita, una cubita. No, they drink. So I, <laughs> you know, I'm a drinker too. I, I have my own tequila and everything. But it's because I've seen them since I was a little girl, and and I think that's good too because yeah. I learned how to drink. You know, and, 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 and that's, well, that's not Responsibly. Sorry, but, uh, sí, exactamente. Exactly. Y no es A veces. Eso es otro podcast. Nada más en mi casa, pero you know, my parents were all, and they would saborearse just like the snacks, you know, the little Mexican snacks. Yeah. And then, okay, la pre-copeo, you know. So, viejo, sírveme una cubita. So my dad has to pour the, the Cuba. My mom is a Cuba, Cuba Libre, or what, yep. you call it Cuba Libre. So, and he has to, que es campechana. So it has a method, you know? And my dad is the only who knows how to do it. And then my, my dad with his tequilita. But oh my God, tequilo no non. O sea, it's like, like el caballito, no es caballito. Es yeah, like yeah. pinche percheron. You know? So, so I, but it's so, so much. It's a venti. It's a venti, <laughs> <laughs> totally really so and he saves on it so and it takes forever and they they're just there and i'm just like i'm craving what they I, you know they they really love that and they I love it lo disfrutan tanto y eso me encanta de I mexico aquí everything is just everything's too fast they don't enjoy that much it's yes. like like fast food like this or you go and have a meeting at one and at two it, Everybody's gone yep. after having lunch. And then, nosotros hacemos sobremesa. I've been having in the same restaurant, desayuno, comida y cena. Porque luego, no, I'm here, come over. And I then love you that. close a, a deal. And then, oh, no, I'm mi amigo, ahí viene. And then it's just a big family, you know? And then we get, you know, drunk. And then otra vez sobrios. And then the whole day. It's just like, we don't, I, I, I just, I just, you know, I miss that a lot. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, here's going like, so let's, good. Let, let's let's go have a beer. Yeah. Uh, when next week? At, next week? I don't even know if I'm gonna be alive. Right now, I'm craving it right now. Yeah. I don't know if I'm gonna crave it next week. You know, it's like everything's under the book, and it's just. I mean, uh, it has, all, of course, has other things and the I love quality that. of life. Is yeah, amazing. I love the 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 beauty of living in the moment. Absolutely, that's everything. It's so special. I, 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 I even have a tattoo that says here now. 
we have to because now and i'm telling you and I, i'm not gonna sound like an old lady but i am <laughs> i'm turning 50 and i can't believe it how life really goes so fast and when you're young you don't realize that because you're so young and then you turn around and you wait what 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 happened <laughs> <laughs> what happened so honestly just enjoy life enjoy have fun because that's what we're here for i love it yeah. congrats on on your your early birthday uh thank you and uh congrats on uh you know still being if not not just as successful but you know just being still at the top of your success and looking amazing oh thank you so i mean much. kate and uh i also i want to congratulate you on, on your tequila as well by the way thank you it's really good i am you know i've been touring i should have brought some honor uh, which I love the name, which is, you know, yeah. same in English and Spanish, spelling and meaning. So it's great for a, for an alcoholic beverage, you know, drink with honor. And I always yeah. say that. Be responsible, and but have a good time. And, and, and learn how to drink tequila, por Dios. Learn how to drink tequila. Just sip. If it's a good tequila, sip on it and treat it as a good wine. Yep. Giving some air in a co copita coñaquera. And, and you're going to enjoy it. You won't have any cruda, dolor de cabeza. You're going to have a great buzz. Buzz, you know, yeah. It, it's, it, yeah. It, and it has no calories. So it's, it, tequila is an amazing, amazing. And it's, it viene de la tierra mexicana. It's not like wine that comes from outside the tierra, you know, from the soil. Yeah. But it's from the inside. It's Mexican. It's all Mexico. I love it. I know you don't have bottles with you today, but I'll give you our address before you walk out today. I will. I will definitely, definitely, and and and, and, and also you can buy it online. <laughs> oh, we'll buy it online. We'll buy it online. Or in Vallarta's. No, I'm kidding. No, 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 of course, but because it is a great. I go out, and you know why I started doing the tequila because I would go out here, and then I would ask for a tequila, and suddenly it was like, thirty dollars, a, a little caballito, yo of a. X tequila that it wasn't even good and I was like no we need from all the paisanos a great high premium tequila that is not gonna cost you $50 the 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 drink you know the shot so that's what I did it's not it's not that cheap I know but because it is a great tequila we have a lot of metals we I am so proud of my tequila that's Honor. beautiful blanco reposado reposado claro y añejo ahora it's so good I love it yeah yes We're try it we got to do that, Fresler. Yes. We got to order yes. some and, and support Kate. Yes. And, yes. And honor. Um, let's talk about the success of La Reina del Sur, which has been crazy. And I feel like, obviously, Telemundo has put a lot into, into this series. And it's a big reason why it's such a huge success. During the pandemic, a lot of people watch on Netflix. And, you know, once it was on there... Um, season three now yes talk to me about it oh my god it's been uh, it's been craziness uh we did the first season you know this is for people that don't know about la reina so it's based on a book yeah and a novel um, from this amazing author arturo perez reverte spaniard and um it, it was a bestseller for decades i always wanted it I, I, when i read the book i was like oh my god i want to be teresa mendoza but nobody will even turn around and see me you know it was every single amazing director in hollywood had that because it was going to be a movie originally so um you know estaba eva mendez eh, salma creo que hasta j lo iba que quería hacer wow. like every, even madonna if i'm not wrong wow. in that moment it was a huge boom so whatever i was like nobody nobody will turn around but then eh, lo hicieron serie and then they called me and i was like okay telemundo telemundo wasn't doing that good back then it was univision you know the mm -hmm. other uh, network that was competing and i was like okay now i was telling my manager oh my god probably nobody will watch it and she's like yeah that's perfect so don't, but it's la reina del sur <laughs> yeah, yeah. so if, if it goes wrong nobody will watch it and i'm like well yeah and i'm gonna have fun because i, I love that character yeah so we were like yes just do it oh my god and so we were like uh having fun about that and then it became a huge success and uh, i was i remember when they told me that it was doing amazingly and we were beating cbs abc nbc like in that time slot regardless of language i couldn't believe it i was like Oh my god in my own language i am crossing over yeah 
that's fucking cool. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I is. was so proud. And also because we had a horrible time shooting. Not a horrible time, but it was really harsh. We had no money. <laughs> you know, it was uh, unos horarios. That I was, remember, I was almost went to the hospital. I was so tired. Yeah. Um, and, and, and Teresa Mendoza had no kids, so it was only my story. It was a lot of work. So anyways, it became the huge success that it is. And then after 10 years, we did the second season. And I was like, nobody's going to remember Teresa Mendoza or La Reina del Sur whatsoever. You know, it's 10 years. And boom, again, even better. Again, in the same time slot, uh, beating all the Americans. And all the, you know, those are the NCSI, yeah, all these that yeah. they are, you know. So I was really proud and I'm very excited. We, we got an Emmy on the second season. Congrats. So that's really cool. Yes. Thank you. And, and this third one, let me tell you, I've never seen a TV series like this. This is for sure the most ambitious series in Spanish uh, language. So uh, I, 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 we watched the first episode yesterday with all the fans and everything, and you couldn't hear nothing. Like, it was a huge theater. And it's just amazing how people love La Reina. So in this one, this third one, it's just like a movie. It's just like an action movie. It became now like a like a, a political thriller yeah. with a lot of action. And this woman, Teresa Mendoza, who's become a, una justiciera, yeah. you know, and, and so strong because she was in jail for four years in total isolation. So a person like her, a woman like her, would just start, you know, her, her you know, he's so smart, street smart, because yes. she didn't go to school. But, you know, this intelligence goes on and on. So she comes out as a justiciera. We are now, a, we kept this away from narco, thank God. And, and now she became, becomes this warrior. So nice. I'm very excited. And it's edited like a, like a movie. It's like the first episode is like you can't breathe. Wow. Like give me a break, please. So I'm I'm very happy because I think all the the fans are gonna be so satisfied because we we're giving everything of everything that La Reina del Sur is like estamos como exprimiendo, squeezing everything. Todo y sale eso, sí. I love that. And it's all about Latin America. So we're going to Peru, Argentina, Colombia, eh, Bolivia, y Mexico. Wow. Amazing. So if you're Latin American. You're going to be so proud. And if you're not, you're going to learn so much about who we are and how beautiful it is. Like los, El Salar de Uyuni. It's a 140, son como 140 kilometros de pura sal. All salt. The, the, the salt flats, calling wow. it in, in English. Uh, it's like craziness. It's like so beautiful. And then Machu Picchu in Peru. Forget it. Was that your first so time beautiful. out there? Yes. Wow. Yes, I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh. Let me like give me a moment to take this in. It's just so grandioso in so many ways. What part of of you do you think is is most like your character? If there's one thing. Pues que somos borrachas y nos gusta el tequila. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I love that. Honesty, I love it, I love it. Pues sí, nos gusta el tequila, nos gustan los hombres, nos va mal en el amor. De todo, todos los efectos que tiene Teresa Mendoza, because she's like an anti-heroine. And that's why they love her. That's why, how they relate to her, because she's flawed. You know, she, she, I don't know, she does so many bad things, but she's still a woman that loves and protects. And she's smart, and she's resilient, and she... She's unstoppable. She's yeah. unstoppable. So, so she has all that, and 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 I and I love it. And also, she's bad spoken, and she's raw, and she is outspoken too. And and I have those things too. Sort of like a like a, a realistic superhero, like a real life. Yes. You know, she's not flying through no, through exactly. the air. She pero... doesn't have superpowers, or you know, no. But she does a lot of things. And in this third one, we, we bring the human trafficking, which is, you know, Latin yep. America. And not only there, but, you know. But so it's, it's huge. It, I mean, it's very deep. We, we touch. Uh, it's very political yeah. between the United States, Mexico, Latin America, and all this corruption. Uh, very real. I mean, yeah. <laughs> honestly, it's really yeah. cool. Yeah. Of, of all the shows that are similar to La Reina del Sur. What makes La Reina del Sur different and stand out to you than, than any other show? 
any other narco show like you yeah that, in, that, in, in that in that um, in that type of um I, I, I think she is a woman I, again is the character uh, Teresa Mendoza she was a woman who was you know I've been privileged in my life because I've had options options of what do you want to be I want to be an actress oh, okay there you go um I want to move to Los Angeles oh well there you go uh, you know but there's a lot of people that they have no options in life yeah. and Teresa Mendoza is one of them she fell in love with someone who who died and after that her destiny changed and and she had a destiny that she didn't want she had no option either do this or you die so she had to become a drug lord and she is she well <laughs> a drug dealer but she becomes the best one yeah the best one um so so that's one of the things that because mostly all the narco series is because they want to they want to be that person because of power because of whatever it is um so i think that the character and because she's a total anti-heroine is what makes her and, and and the story is just a great story i mean there's no story there's nothing yeah yeah when it comes to you know a, a show like this the fans is i'm sure what makes being a part of a series like this so special for you right of course and being in the character being a woman Yes. Also, I mean, yes. Don't forget that it's like hard as an actor, not only in Latin America. Latin America is even worse, but here in the United States, it's hard to to get those kind of roles. If not stereotype, but Teresa Mendoza, at least we keep her without being sexualized, objectified, and that she's she's who she is because of her brains, and that's it. How involved are you with that? With with letting the 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 producing team, the creators, the writers saying this is how i want her to oh my god i'm very jealous to be. let me tell you even with arturo perez reverte who's amazing and i have a great relationship with um i told him arturo i know teresa better than you now so just <laughs> let it go <laughs> give it to me you know it's in good hands and i will defend her like you have no idea because it's already written so beautifully and so perfectly and all the characters in, in, in the series, they are so, he's such an amazing author. So why tamper with that? You know, and, yeah. and why if something has had so much success, why just, uh, tra la vamos a traicionar? Yeah. you know, why betray the character? So I always have saying in, the, in, the, in all the, the scripts, in all the story, and, and for example, they wanted to, almost marry her and finish like the, the you know the family and i'm like what no she doesn't need a man to be happy <laughs> yeah. that's the main thing about teresa right she is who she is and she has a terrible life yes because everything dies around her because she has to run all the time because she's always thinking someone's gonna someone's gonna kill her so it's not a good life well it's not an apology to the narcos at all it's exactly the opposite yeah and it's something that happens all the time in Latin America. So it, it is what it is, but, but not Teresa Mendoza. Teresa Mendoza, let's keep her like she is. Although it's being, it's, it, it, there's been a huge arc in the character from season one to season three, and you're gonna mm -hmm. see it, no more mature, but, but not her essence. No, no su alma, no quien es ella. You know? I love that. So yeah, it's, it's hard. And for me, that's the challenge to keep her real. I love that. And I love how you, you fight for her. Oh, yeah. The character. And, Me. and, uh, no, that's, that's such a special show. And, and I know it resonates with a lot of people. A lot of fans are, are, are watching this right now. And, uh, I'm sure are, are going to binge watch and, and, and watch, uh, as, as it's already out now. Yeah. yeah. Was out. So, yes. I, I don't even want to know how it's doing, but I think, uh, it's going to be well because, much better. I really think it, this third season goes beyond the expectatives of any anybody. It, it went beyond my own expectatives when I when I saw I saw already the first seven episodes, and I was like, "Oh my god, okay, I'm good." <laughs> and everything I'm assuming is a step up, right? From like, oh yeah, the visuals to oh, the storyline, the, the production values. Yeah. I mean, they spend so much money. Yeah. So much money because it's Netflix and Telemundo. So wow. they they really spend a lot of money in this show. And that's why I'm telling you this is the most expensive, ambitious show in in, in Spanish language. So 
So, and you're going to see it, you know? I'm like, well, you don't, you're don't. you not giving me the money of the budget, so I want to see the money <laughs> on the screen. I want to <laughs> see that on the screen, and, and you will see it. I love that. Yes. Congratulations, Kate. Thank you that's so that's much, amazing man. to you and, and your whole team. Thank you. Uh, and, and the team that's here with you, too, that, that travels. I know you were talking earlier about how being in entertainment isn't easy. Like, oh, yeah. It's a lot of hard work. It takes a team. Yes, so so yes. kudos to, Waking to you. Waking up very early, yeah. traveling, this and that, and, and you have to do it. You know, it's part of the job. It's part of the, and, and it's really cool because you get to come to this amazing show and meet you and your team too. But also uh, when you're proud of your work, of the, sometimes, I mean, we all have nuestro frijolito, no? Negro ahí. <laughs> Que no queremos ni hablar. <laughs> you know, que, que dices, oh, my God, oh, I can't promote this. I can't, but I needed the money. And sometimes it is what it is, and it's like that. And it hurts to promote, so, you know. But, <laughs> but when you are so proud of, of it, it makes everything easier. Yeah, for sure, yeah. for sure. So thank you. Thank you for, for coming once again. I'm not going to let you go just yet. I have Rapid Fire with Kate Del Castillo. Are you okay. ready? Okay. A million dollars or a million more followers? Oh, dollars. <laughs> <laughs> hey. <The> check <laughs> favorite, favorite Spanish word? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll take that. Judges? <laughs> ding, ding. If you don't know it, Google. <laughs> I think that's my, my now my <laughs> favorite in English, Google. <laughs> yeah. When you go, when you go on, on, on uh, another late night talk show, just wear a shirt that says, just Google. Just it. Google. <laughs> Salsa you Roja. That's, that, that, that's, that's good. That's a good, that's, yeah, I love it. Salsa I Roja will. or Salsa Verde? Verde. Salsa or Merengue? Uh, salsa. Favorite piece of technology? Salsa que pique. Que pique. <laughs> Favorite piece of technology that you use? Um, the phone, the I phone? guess. Yeah. Favorite Latino food dish? Uh, chilaquiles, for sure. Best song to play at a party? Um, oh, there's so many. Este, ay, jole, soy muy mala. Um, it, I, I don't like, I'm sorry, but I don't like reggaeton. Oh, you don't? It, but you know what? It starts reggaeton and, and my butt starts like moving yeah. without yeah. me wanting it because yeah. I hate it. But, but it starts like, there's no way you cannot dance with the reggaeton. I, I give you that. I mean, yes, I give reggaeton that. But, pero, pero, <laughs> you know, yeah, something me, let, starts moving that me, you don't know how to handle. Let me turn the music on. See if, <laughs> see if you're being honest with us here. But um, I... I love, again, I know I'm very Mexican, but I love that rancheras. I love la banda. I love el mariachi. I love that. It just brings me back to home, back home. Yeah, I love it. Uh, lastly, what's a nickname of yours that no one really knows about? Okay. I know. <laughs> Langosta. Langosta. Well, listen, so I'm Mexicana, so I can give you a lot right now because <laughs> you know albur you know double sense yeah. you know what we have so uh la langosta porque decían que tenía toda la carne en la c okay <laughs> google <laughs> google <laughs> but you langosta. know now i'm turning 50 so that's gone <laughs> so sad <laughs> but but i used to be la langosta <laughs> langosta at least it was not because i had all the in la cabeza, you know? Right, right. It could have gone that way. Oh, bueno, eso es lo que me decían a mí. Maybe I got it all wrong. It was langosta for all the good reasons. Right. For all the good reasons. Yeah. I hope so. At oh least I'm gosh. dealing with that. You know? Oh, my gosh. Well, I say this respectfully. Langosta. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming, Kate. Thank I, you. I, we, I love you. We all love you here. You're Thank welcome you. anytime here at Mondo and Friends. Thank you. So give it up one more time for Kate Del Castillo, everybody. Thank you. Go and watch La Reina del Sur out now. Yes, please do. Please go and watch it. And, and de verdad, you're going to be happy watching it.
Yeah. I love it. And thank you so much for watching and listening to Mondo and Friends presented by Verizon.